everyone, my name is Sydney Glickson. I debated for four years during high school in congressional debate. And after graduating, I became a coach. You're watching the Ascend channel, and today we're going to be talking about refutation. So refutation is a really, really important part of debate. In my opinion, it is the most important part of debate. And unfortunately, a lot of debaters don't fully understand how to refute, and so it oftentimes gets left out of flow, especially in prelims rounds. We're gonna to talk today about what a refutation is, how do you make a good refutation, how do you use refutations, and where should they go in your speech. So let's start with the definition. A refutation is simply a response to an opponent's argument. And as debaters, we usually think about refutations as disproving an opponent's argument, showing how they're wrong. And that's, that's true, but it's really just a response. And so you can have responses that talk about and talk with other arguments that don't necessarily disprove them entirely. And some of the nuance in refutation we're going to talk about today is when you have refs that aren't just you're completely wrong kind of refutations. It's important, obviously, to disprove other people's arguments in the flow, but it's equally important to engage with other debaters in ways that encourage a critical thinking of argumentation, and refutations offer you the chance to do that as well. Um, even though we don't always think about it that way. The reason that we refute is we are not speech kids. We are debaters, right? And speech is an awesome event, but if you're in debate, then we want to see debate. And in order to see debate, I need to see you engaging with the flow and with the other speakers in the round. Refutations are a means to do that. The basic structure of a refutation is actually quite simple, and I'm going to put this up on the screen. First, a refutation is going to summarize the other speaker's argument. And that simply means you're going to tell me what the other person said. Most of the time, debaters forget that judges can't remember everything. And while you're flowing around, judges are writing comments, unless they're maybe a parley. In order for me as a judge to know what you're talking about, I need you to tell me whose argument you're referring to and what they said. Next, you're going to say why their argument is incorrect with evidence. The basis of this part of the refutation is tell me why they're wrong or what I should be thinking about in their argument, even if it's not entirely wrong, and give me some reason to think that's true. Evidence can be a citation. In some cases, it might just be a logical statement, but it should be an objective reason that they're incorrect, not your emotions or your opinions without any substantiation. Then you're going to add the impact that a refutation has on the round. That is the most important part. Tell me why it matters that they're wrong. Lots of people are wrong in every round about a lot of things, but only some of them are important enough to point out. Why is this one of those moments? And when you combine those three aspects, you get a full ref. Summarization of the other person's arguments, why their argument is incorrect with evidence, and the impact on the round that that has. That altogether makes a full refutation. So obviously there are different ways to refute and they don't all have to prove someone entirely wrong. The one that is most similar to a standard way we think of a refutation is called a takeout. And that is when you just disprove someone completely. You are irrelevant, you don't even belong in this debate. What was that argument essentially? And that's usually what we think of because that is obviously the most fun. It's fun to say to a speaker in the room, this makes no sense, it's totally incorrect, and we should not bother wasting our time weighing your argument against the rest of the flow. Those refutations have a time and a place, and they're really great when someone is truly and honestly incorrect. But in a lot of cases, two other types of refs work really well. Those are called mitigation and turns. Mitigation is minimizing someone else's impacts. And in order to do that, you have to acknowledge that they're right. They're not wrong. They have a good point. It's correct in its argumentation, but it's not really important to the round. So the basic concept with mitigation is to say, I get what you're saying. I hear you. We often in debate hear this as, I understand or I sympathize what Representative X is saying. But, and following that but is the reason that even if you sympathize or understand what their argument is intending, here's why I don't care all that much, and here's why you shouldn't either judge. A pretty good example of where mitigation works well is if you have someone making an argument that says something like, three to five percent of the time, funds were misused in foreign aid. And you are on the affirmation of a bill, you're trying to promote more foreign aid to be sent, and you can't have the negation have arguments that foreign aid doesn't work because it's contradictory to your 
your goals of aiming to increase foreign aid to whatever country is being referred to in the bill. Now, three to five percent misuse of foreign aid is there. It is a number, but it's not substantial, right? Three to five percent misuse is pretty minimal when we have 97 to 95 percent of use doing something good, improving the world. Maybe you argue that the harms of a gas tax are much smaller than the harms of pollution. And so, yeah, a gas tax is regressive and that is bad. But the problem with climate change is that it's worse and it's regressive in all of the same ways. So even though I agree with you on this gas tax front, I'm going to drop down its relevance and lift up the relevance of climate change. And that is what mitigation essentially does. The last kind of refutation we sometimes use are turns. This is where you go down the same path as the original side does, but at some point you deviate from it and you show how their argument, following their line of argumentation, actually should end at a different impact or it should take a different link and then the connection is, is actually incorrect in their version of the argument. These are all great ways to refute and they're all different. And I don't believe in thinking in jargon. I don't think good debaters sit in rounds and say, should I do mitigation? Should I have a takeout? That's not how I thought as a debater. And I don't think it's a constructive way to use your limited and very stressful time in a high stakes cir circumstance. Rather, you should be engaging with the flow in ways where you are critically thinking about it. So listen to the round, establish what you know versus what is being said. And in those discrepancies, you will find refutation. My best trick to help students find refs and round is to encourage them to research more. If you don't have a strong foundation of research, it's very hard to find out what is incorrect in a round because you actually don't know. And even with the luxury of internet, it's still tough if you don't have good background knowledge. I do encourage my students to be looking up and around things that sound like they might be iffy. If you're not sure if that point makes a lot of sense or if that data seems well represented and you have access to the internet, you should be using that luxury of access and resource to help find out if that is a place to refute. Oftentimes debaters take data and extrapolate it to have meanings that is not represented in the studies that have been written. That is a place you can refute. You can either take an argument out, you can mitigate how significant its impacts are, and all of that can oftentimes be given away simply by looking up a study that someone used. The basis of all strong refutations are in research because that is how you tell a judge what is incorrect. They haven't had the background reading you have. So it's your job to correct gaps in the knowledge and understanding in the room, and that is what refutation should essentially do. So when you're sitting in a round, and you're listening and you're trying to figure out what the important points of refutation are, there are two key tips that I would provide. The first is to look at your speech. You don't want to be refuting things that are barely related or completely unconnected, completely disconnected to your arguments because they're not going to integrate into your argumentation very well. So even if it's the best refutation in the world, sometimes it isn't worth giving if it's super far away from the arguments that you have or you're planning to give. So the way to come up with refutations to give is to find out what is being said in the round that pertains to my speech, that my speech either disproves or has potential to disprove in the links and the warrants that it's making. Then the second thing you need to ask yourself are what are things that I'm hearing, general trends I am hearing, that I know are false? And how can I take a specific speaker's evidence or warrant or links or their analysis to show that is a false pretense being made in this round. This is where debaters can have really awesome and cool imp impact refutations because they're able to take arguments that have just proliferated throughout the round and become fact when they're really not. And if you're the debater who can point out, hey, we've all been believing this thing and it's just not true, here's why, it's a really strong way to show a judge you are well read, you are well informed, and you know how to take a stance against opinions that are incorrect. So you have good refs now, you know what kinds of refs you want to use, you know how to listen to rounds, be thinking about the flow, where do you put them? Refutations for novices often just end up spotted at the end of the speech, which technically works, but it's not all that interesting. What is much better is to try and integrate those refutations throughout and into your argument. And that is why it is so important that as you're listening to a round, you're figuring out how a refutation can integrate into your argument as it stands. 
because you're going to put it into your argument wherever it fits best. If you are writing refs that intentionally partner well with the speech you are planning to give, then you have no issue finding good places to fit it in. You're going to be able to look at your speech and say, oh, well, I wrote this refutation by thinking about my warrant. So thus, my refutation should go close to my warrant. Or I wrote this refutation because my evidence disproves this other person's argument. So my refutation should be bookending that piece of evidence. If you're writing refutations absent of your speech, then it's much harder to integrate them because they don't have any real connection. You then have to make fake connections, which are possible, but harder to do. I would just encourage you to write refs in reference to the speech that you're writing because it is so much easier to integrate them on the back end that way. The last thing that I will say is refutation is essential to debate. I will not rank a speaker highly if they don't refute, and that is the case for most judges in most tournaments in most parts of the country. And that means that debaters have to be willing to take risks. Obviously, all refutations are not perfect refutations. I don't think most refutations are perfect refutations, but it's better to put yourself out there and attempt to critically think about an argument and share that with the chamber and the judge than to not reference other speakers at all. Sometimes you won't have a way to make somebody wrong. That is okay. Refutations are about dialogue. They're about response. And so even if you can't tell somebody that they're incorrect, you can still have a dialogue with them about nuances in their argument. Your refutations are places to engage with that gray area, to give me a way as a judge to see nuance in the debate like you do. The way that I was finally able to achieve this was to stop thinking about refutations as going after arguments to take them out of the flow, and instead thinking about refutations like a sports commentator would, to say, I am going to make commentary on the debate as it stands. That was a really good pass from Representative X to Representative Y. Or that was clearly a point for this team, right, this side of the debate. Or that was a fumble. They dropped that argument and it's going to have consequences on the rest of the game or the round. Because from that point of view, it's not really about who's right and who's wrong. It's about each step in getting towards the end goal. And where do we go right and where do we go wrong? When you start thinking about refutations as this infinite dialogue between you and all of the other speakers in the room, it opens the door for you to think critically and for you to question things without always having answers. When you stop thinking about refutations and debate as about rights and wrongs, but as about a series of different steps, all of which have an impact on how a judge views the outcome of the round, then you're able to make these really nuanced arguments at specific people about how their specific play in the greater round is going to have an impact on what we all collectively understand. You can remove yourself in a way from the personal part of the argument, right? And say, as an observer of your speech, as an observer of this debate, this is what I noticed and this is what I'm thinking about it as an expert because you've done so much background research in the field. And those kinds of refutations show a lot of control. They tell me that you understand the topic, you understand the social dynamic of Congress, you understand that you're legislators. You're not just here to push your agenda infinitely. You're here to talk with one another and try and work out real life solutions to big world problems. Those are the kinds of refutations that really good debaters are able to utilize. And they show far more about who you are as a speaker than just being able to say, Representative W is wrong. All right, to finish this off, let's talk about one drill that you can run to help you get better at refutations. This drill is really easy and it will help you get a little bit more familiar with some of the news and news cycle at the time of the practice. And that's also great too. So you're going to pick any news article you can find. I prefer to do this with the opinion section, but you definitely can do it with anything. And take a couple of minutes to familiarize yourself with these articles. We want things that are short and really easy to digest. Then write down a refutation of something in this article from a logical standpoint. So we're removing evidence from these types of refutations for the sake of the drill. If you read something about UBI, maybe you're going to write a response to that article that says why you think UBI is a good or a bad idea. And you can agree with the author, but have a difference of opinion in scope or magnitude. 
You can disagree with the author altogether. You can agree with the author, but wonder how important this really is. You can agree with the author, but wonder, is this really going to help that many people? You can disagree with the author, but say there's merit to the idea. We just don't have the infrastructure to implement it. Whatever your response is, take about one minute and try and write out a bullet point, which summarizes what they've said, explains why they're incorrect, or if you agree with them, why it's not important, and then what impact does that have on our society and your understanding of the topic? And that is replacing the what impact does this point have on the round in a normal refutation. Then practice giving that ref as if you are talking to the person. Refutations are meant to be very in interpersonal, so it should feel like you're having a conversation with someone. After you've written it out, go ahead and give it a couple of times, maybe record it, see how it sounds, and that's a great way to start practicing engaging with ref in general. Obviously, nothing compares to being in rounds. So whenever you are in rounds, make sure you're practicing refuting and giving yourself as many opportunities as possible to get ready to practice bringing the flow into your debate. Thank you so much for joining me to talk about refutation today and leave any questions you might have in the comments. Bye.